My bedroom is dated and uncomfortable. How could anyone think this was good enough for paying customers? Bye-bye. Can I meet the owners? Yes, I'll be right back with the owners. Look how dead they are. Gordon, <laughs> this is Tina and John Tina. Imhoff. I'm nice Tina. to see you. Nice to Gordon. see you. Nice to meet you, sir, John. Likewise, good to see you both. It's quite amazing when you drive up and you see this sort of statue of the building. It's... Yes, sir. Isn't it beautiful? It's stunning until we get inside. <gasps> Hotel experience prior to this was what? Very, very little. I mean, no. I was... No, none. I, none. So, year one, what was the profit? We lost about $350,000 the first year. Year two? $250,000. Profit? Loss. Loss. So we're in for $600,000 within 24 months of business. Who's funding this? Well, um, my mom and dad have Us. put in several hundred thousand dollars. Wow. Um, our and children. Our children. Your children. Yes. Yes. Shay has put about $25,000 on credit cards. Shay is your... The oldest daughter. Oldest. Your oldest daughter, yeah. right. It's a chef's um, significant other. OK. And so my youngest daughter uh, just lent us $10,000. Your youngest daughter. She's in college. Was your house on the line next? Yes, it is up for sale. And we would live here. We would move on to the third floor. Where'd you draw the line and say, stop, this is not working? You're standing there like proud cock, very confident, very happy, and like nothing's gone wrong, but... Taking money from your daughter that hasn't even started I would one never foot ask her. on the path of her career. I believed that we would be able to turn it around. Oh no, but John, I'm sorry. Your parents' money, your family's money, your daughter's money. I, I do have a positive attitude. There's a difference between sounding positive and sounding full of crap. He doesn't know me and, and he doesn't know the situation. I'm a military guy. I'm not gonna take Chef Ramsay's bullshit. I've just met the owners of the struggling Cambridge Hotel and discovered they've borrowed money from their kids to stay open. I, I do have a positive attitude. There's a difference between sounding positive and sounding full of crap. Unbelievable. Tina, how do you manage? I don't know how I manage. And I was very close to running away several times. Wow. Seriously? Unreal. Thank you. I've been frustrated for years with him not listening to me. When somebody doesn't listen to you for a while, you just give up. What is it about John that's driven his wife and potential guests away? I need to watch the general in action. What are you doing with the Hoover? Welcome. Nice to see you. Sorry about the uh, owner walking through with the Hoover. Are you joining us for a sleepover or are you joining us for dinner? Dinner. Excellent. Damn it. Kim, you tell me I help you. John keeps himself constantly busy, but he's busy doing all the wrong things. His non-stop fussing and fidgeting is killing the hotel's atmosphere. What's he doing? Oh, my God. How can this place call itself a luxury hotel? I need to get some answers from Eddie, the Keating's owner and visionary. Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? Good hey, to hey. see you. This place has been your baby in many ways, and uh, I'm dying to find out the vision, the insight, and to why. Give us a little tour. I bought the building back in 2000. It was around six million. Did you go to hotel school? No. Nope. You've never run a business before? Not a hotel business, no. Wow. So I was actually at the Ferrari dealer looking at cars and stuff, and it kind of hit me, why not the Ferrari of hotels? I'm more concerned what you were smoking at the time than what you were thinking. Why would you take one of the most high-spec cars anywhere in the world and turn it into a hotel? I don't know where he's coming from, but it does piss me off. I designed the Keating to be the perfect hotel for me, not for him. Where should I start? The floor. It's all scuffed and marked. When you have a resin floor, it needs to be updated. I mean, everything's just marked to hell. It feels cheap. Um, the sheets. You can't call yourself a luxury hotel if you don't have beautifully pressed sheets. OK. What's the idea behind sitting here? So when you have guests, you know, we can sit down and talk. And... No, but where's the sofa? Where's the table? Where's the fun? Do you know what hurt the most? I got soup served in a plastic bowl. There was a chicken parmesan slider that tasted like it was cooked three days ago. Who in the fuck would put a chicken parmesan slider together? There's things that don't go in sliders, and chicken parm is one of them. That was my idea. But you're laughing as if it's funny, and you think because you own the place, you can put that in a roll and sell it. I don't know what he's talking about. This place is not bad. So I think Gordon's comments were complete bullshit. You're trying to convince me this is your idea of luxury. I don't know what to say. When was the last time you stayed in the hotel? It's been a while. You cannot stand there 
and tell me that there's nothing wrong with this place when you don't even stay in it. You bought a building that was your dream, but it doesn't feel like a dream experience to a guest. Nowhere fucking near it. I'm at the Keating Hotel in San Diego, and I've just met Eddie, the owner, who's completely oblivious to the fact that his supercar-inspired hotel is seriously underperforming. You're the owner, and you bought a building that was your dream, but it doesn't feel like a dream experience to a guest. Nowhere fucking near it. I desperately want to help you. Only if you start identifying the problems. OK. Could you uh, send that young lady up to clear that dog shit out of there, please? Jesus. Trust me, Eddie is not used to honesty like that. Right now, he looks like a baby that's just had his lollipop stolen. How are you? Who is this guy? First thing he does, he lays right into me. The room service was terrible. Welcome to my world. He opened the bed up, and the sheets were all, like, wrinkled and... Most hotels have those giant ironing things that the sheets go through there. We don't have that. I tell Eddie the problems that we have. But it may be sometimes you tell people something and it goes one side to another. I was in shock. Maybe Gordon will get him to wake up. I don't even know what to say. That was very embarrassing. I've heard that the owner is a chef, so maybe the restaurant will be the River Rock's saving grace. OK. Good to nice see you. To meet you. And it's Ken, isn't it? Yes, sir. Is this American bistro outside? Yes. Is it a classic bistro? Or is yes. It... Everything made from scratch. That's nice. You're a chef by trade? Yes, I am. Are you not in the kitchen tonight? Uh, no, I'm not working on the line. So you've retired from cooking? Somewhat. Running the past, maybe, or? I'm running the other side. Right. I'm just watching all the food and letting you and setting oh. everything out. It's hard to run this whole place by yourself. I have so many years of experience. I thought that when he hired me, he'd be able to let go a little bit, knowing that I could get this job done. But he just can't seem to let go. Um, and how would you rate the food, one to ten? Seven or eight. And if I asked you to rate your rooms out of ten, what would you give them? Four or five. I'm now shitting myself about dinner. Let's hope that the food is better than the rooms. Sure. The concept of an American bistro serving fresh local food in a country inn makes perfect sense. But I can't make any sense of this menu. Uh, well, uh, um, so I'm getting a little bit confused because we've gone Mexican on the quesadilla, we've jumped down to Thailand, and then we've gone Italian for the calamari. What, what uh, American bistro? Yes, sir. Wow. Um, what would you recommend on the menu? We do a house smoked trout. I believe that it's a golden trout from uh, Northern California. It comes in frozen. You're recommending that I eat frozen trout from you know, Northern California. You know, Chef, it, 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 it's, it's been only frozen once, right? Your oh, head is sweating. Frozen. It's a little hot in here, sir. You're it's, dripping, it's, yeah. It's me, I'm sorry, Chef. I know, I feel like I've got a leak in my fucking bar. I'm it's dying, your bald chef. head. Who puts these ideas together? That would be Kenny, Chef. OK, um, so give me a Thai sampler plate. Yes, sir. Yeah? Uh, entree, dying to see that. Pork the Valdestano? I'm travelling around the globe in Milford. Enjoy. I'm appalled. I was promised an American bistro. Instead, I get a sampling from around the world. I was expecting fresh food, but I get recommended frozen fish. What's going on here? The Thai oh. sampler, chef. Are they made in-house? No, they are not, sir. No, thank you, James. Wow, it's just frozen crap, reheated, and how can you make a slice of chicken look so bland? I wouldn't give that Thai experience to my fucking dog. L6 is on the fire, too. James, I'm struggling. Yes, sir. Where's the chef from? Is he a local boy? Yes, he is. I think left to his own devices, he'd do very well. He's very limited on what he can use for ingredient-wise because he doesn't do the shopping. Who does the shopping now? Kenny does the shopping. So he's almost like cut the balls of the chef off. Yes, sir. M6, M14. The menu at the River Rock is pretty much outdated. Uh, it's Kenny's menu. It's been here for years. I don't agree with the menu, but it's, he's my boss. He pays my, my salary. I'm still going to get to that point where you're just kind of burnt out. Hi, Gordon Amory. How are you? Tough on this one. What do you do here? I bartend and I help manage. Ken's a chef, and right. the chef that's cooking is not allowed to cook his own dishes. Yeah. It's almost like he's sort of cutting his balls off. Well, it's kind of what he does with all of us. Oh, really? He deflates you, strips your confidence, won't let you make any decisions, executive or otherwise. That's crazy. and It's, it's a lot of micromanagement. Why do you stay here? And I'm a loyal dog, unfortunately. I'd bend over backwards for him, but I, I'm, that bone's wearing thin. Ronaldo. Yeah, Mr. Chef uh, Ramsey, that might be the golden ticket. Wow. 
Thank you. Thank you. Jesus Christ almighty. It's like someone's just dropped a fucking T-Rex foot on my plate. Do you have a big mansion that guests can't arrive through the front fucking door? Jesus, who wants to enter through the back door? Mr. Ramsey's here. I need you to do room one right away. Well, at least this door's open. Finally! Hello there. How are you? How are you, Mr. Ramsey? Black Gordon, please. Oh, oh Bloody Gordon. hell, what a nightmare. I'm Robert it? Dean. Robert Dean. We, uh, were you over there? I, I was at the front door, yes. Okay, this is actually our entrance, and in the winter, because of snow, really? we have to keep that locked, because otherwise the snow load comes off and kills people. Kills people? Yeah, it can. Have you killed anyone so no. far? No. <laughs> Where's all this stuff from? Um... An aftermath of an antiques fair. Yeah. This looks like it could be a beautiful room. But you can't tell because it's stuffed with so much clutter. That's the reception desk? No. My God, so what is that? That is our bar right now. You are kidding me. This is the bar? Yes. With what, that? Martinis. Martinis. Yeah. Oh, God bless him. <laughs> uh, made of pigs. Pig martini. Well, we have three rescue pot-bellied pigs. You have three pigs here? Right. What is that for? Were you born with this in your mouth? Yeah, don't I wish. Honestly? Uh, actually, no, that was a gift from... A giant. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Robert obviously loves to show off all his expensive antiques. But as a guest, I don't feel comfortable. I feel like I'm in a museum. This is the main formal dining room. This big chair here is for, for one. Uh, just kind of, we're known as a romantic destination and... Uh, <laughs> just out of interest, how Well, we would move the table. Uh, move it in for me, please? Yes. Wow, so you've got a sofa on the table. We thought it was kind of nice to have like a cozy banquette. Oh, well. Three US presidents have dined here. Oh, really? Which ones? Uh, Teddy Roosevelt, Calvin Coolidge. Teddy Roosevelt dined in here. Wow. I wanted to try to give him a little bit of sense of the history, but Juniper Hill. Wow. OK, so that's the dining room. Well, we have two dining rooms. Oh, God. You must be busy with two dining rooms. Well, I wish we were busy. Bloody hell. We have spurts of being incredibly busy. Right. Uh, where we lack is all the other times. Really? Yeah. This place looks like a millionaire's mansion, not a struggling business. I've got to scratch beneath the surface. This place per week uh, is turning how much? We're lucky if we're doing, you know, 15,000 a month. What does it cost to keep the place open? 30. Really? Yep. So you're losing $200,000 a year? It's been a nightmare. We maintained our room rates, thinking that the economy wouldn't be this long a haul. But we've all experienced those kind of difficulties, and myself included, but you, you navigate your way out of that recession. Unfortunately, my partner lost his job. We expected him to have his job for a little longer. He must have gained a substantial payoff or retirement. It's all been put into this. How much? Over a million dollars. A million dollars? Into this already? Yes. And does he have an active role in the business? He tries to maintain the accounting, mm -hmm. and he helps just about with everything. Uh, we're in trouble. Trouble? You'd never guess from the look of this place. It's more like Buckingham Palace than Skid Row. Do you know what, um, Robert, honestly, I'd like to go straight to my room if you would not okay. mind, please. All right. Wow, uh, this place goes on. It does. It's the largest colonial revival mansion in New England. And more paintings. Wow. And you're in the Maxwell Evart Suite, which is the original. Um, OK. Wow, beautiful room. And, uh... uh I mean, this is, uh, this is a beautiful room, but what is that smell? Seriously? It, it does smell. Yeah, that smells like shit. I mean, that is horrific. Oh, my God. It smells like sewage. Hello. Welcome to the Roosevelt. Good to see you. I recognize that voice. You're Gordon Ramsay. OK, well, <laughs> good to see you. My God, look at those chairs there. Are they from the school? They are. Those came out of the first grade classroom. Well, look, you almost fit. A, a reception for dwarfs, or just? <laughs> first impression from the outside. It's almost like walking into a funeral parlor. Oh. It smells like shit as well. What is that? Is that, did the dog do a? Oh, boy, I sure hope not. Oh, Rohan, Jesus, man. Jesus. This is our dining room. Who's the chef here? I saw a billboard of a guy with the most hideous hat on, <laughs> covered in trees and, like, this six-foot hat. That's <laughs> me. It's kind of uh, grown into Jean-Pierre, the mad French chef of the Roosevelt. Because you're in Coeur d'Alene, is a French name town, you know, so we must cook the fabulous food, wear this outfit. 
<laughs> now you'll see uh, school photos yes. down the hallway here, and these are of kids that went to school here at the Roosevelt. And the ones with the arrows pointing at the really cute, adorable little boy, that's me, of course, because I went to school here. Oh, you went to school? My elementary school. Who wants to live in their old school? It's like getting a detention that never ends. The guests get to hang out down here with the dogs and watch TV. You are kidding me. You can't smell those dogs? Oh, yes, I can. The dogs actually, believe it or not, Gordon, are one of the highlights here. Now you're sounding deluded. What's next? Our little ballroom or our multi-purpose room. Oh, come on. Rohan, you're not supposed to be in this room. Don't you think this place could at least had some form of makeover? Well, sadly, Gordon, we renovated this room four years ago. This is new. Stop. No. This room looks like it was last decorated in 1908, not 2008. And how much did you spend on this? 54,000. 54,000? Five, four. Yeah. Not 5,400, 54,000. I know, lovely, huh? Christ almighty. And does it generate money? No. I can't believe anyone would want to rent that space. It's hideous. I'm dying to have a look upstairs. It can't get any worse. It could get worse. And what's your uh, occupancy across the year? Probably around mid-20s. 20% 20 across the board. Ouch. <laughs> I am amazed you find it so funny. This is your room. OK. What's with all the pink? It's like someone threw up strawberry milkshake all over the place. My room has two levels, each as bad as the other. Oh. Everything looks like we're in a time warp. I mean, it's so dated. So my room, how much did you pay to stay in here? Uh, 319. $319. Bloody hell. I'm speechless. 13-year-old <laughs> decor, $319 yeah. a night. Can I ask you something? Fire away. Why do you think everything's a big joke? Because you're very critical. I'm here to get this place right. But what I don't understand is how blasé you are to the situation. I'm going to give you the truth. And if you don't like that, then I'm out of here. What do you want me to do? Get no, angry just, and punch nah. you? You want to punch me? Uh, you go well, first. Maybe I do want to punch you a little bit. But I can become physically very, very violent and have, in the past, people get hurt. Here's your keys. John. John! You can't just walk away. Where are you going? <laughs>